snack has played a, a huge part in my training camp. The protein, the, the ZMA, everything. The, the pre-workout has played such a major part in my training camp, keeping me healthy, keeping me recovered, keeping me feeling good, strong, and ready for my next workout. I'm excited about fighting in my hometown. It's something I wanted to do since I turned professional and to be coming back home as a world champion and defending at the Bridgestone, such a huge venue. Uh, I'm excited, I'm motivated, and uh, I'm ready. You've already predicted a knockout, right? Sticking to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said in my last fight, either he can wave the white flag or I'll wave it for him. So. Caleb, what's this week been like in terms of preparation for you? Oh, feeling good. Feeling good. Uh, feeling good. Rested, relaxed, uh, all the hard work is done. There's nothing else, you know, can't get better shape with in these last couple of days. Either all the work's uh, done or it's not. So, what do, you, what do you know about his style and how does that match up with your style? Um, I know he's uh, got a lot of fights, a lot of knockouts, and uh, I know he's coming to school with my plans, but uh, he'll fall short. So. Does this feel any differently? I mean, I know you've been in title fights and big fights before, but maybe just being at home, have you, have you noticed any different feelings? Uh, I mean, I'm excited, but it's not really something I'm focused on. You know, I'm excited to be here in front of all you guys and be in front of my home crowd. Uh, like I said, there's something I really wanted, something I pushed for, but once I got it, there's no reason to really continue to focus and worry and wonder about that. I'm just treating it like it's another fight in another city and another venue. And uh, this is another ring, another day of work. So, Caleb, how proud are you that the journey has led you here, being it's something that you always wanted to do to fight in your hometown? Um, super excited. You know, I, I've worked very hard for this moment um, for many years. And, um, you know, there was a point in time where there were no cameras in front of me. I wasn't, you know, there were no claps, there were no cheers. It was just me and my little team that's grown into a big team. But um, just me and my little team working in the dark. And uh, now we're on the big stage and we're prepared. Austin, who's fighting in the undercard, called you the hardest worker ever. He grew up with you, he watched you fight. Mm -hmm. um, what has led to that mentality that Caleb Floyd has? Just, um, yeah, I think since I was a kid, my father has just instilled in me that whatever you're not willing to do, there's someone else out there who is. So um, I'm a fierce competitor and just how, you know, I don't want to lose in boxing. To me, someone working harder than me, then I'm losing in that area too. And uh, it wasn't just a, you know, it wasn't the goal to become world champion. It was just a goal. So um, I've said this in many other interviews. I don't feel like I'm at the peak. I feel like I just got to the base by winning this world title. So there's much more that I want to accomplish. My my goals are set high, and um, you know, you can't get there just by wishing and keeping your fingers crossed. You got to work for it. So, what is the goal? If that was just a goal, what is the goal? To become, at the end of the day, to become the first undisputed super middleweight of all time. There's four world titles in each weight class. So to be undisputed, that means you have to hold all four at the same time. And uh, there's never been a super middleweight to do that. So I want to be the first. I want to be pound for pound. I want to be, I want to be a legend. I want to be, you know, immortal in the sport. A name that, that never fades. So, what do you expect to show the home crowd on Saturday night? Out there? A show. <laughs> a show. Tune in this Saturday, February fifteenth on Fox. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fireworks. What's the uh, the battle like? To you just kind of mentioned about always having to work and do do the stuff. The, the battle to stay hungry. Like you were hungry to get to where you are now. To stay hungry. I mean, it's really not hard for me. I, it's like I hear a lot. Oh well, now you're not the the hunter. You're the hunted. But I still feel like I'm hunting. You know, I like I said, it was just a goal to become a world champion. So those other goals and aspirations that I just named that are so high up there, that's what keeps me motivated, you know? And it also, I mean, there's many, there's many factors that, you know, many things can be motivated. My daughter, my mother, you know, my stepmom, my dad, Jordan, my children who aren't here yet, making sure that they don't have to go through the things that, some of the things that I've been through to, you know, get to this point, so. Uh, the other day we had a long emotional post on Instagram about your daughter. Do you feel as though keeping this legacy of winning title fights is not only building your legacy, but hers as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I don't try to cram it down anyone's throat. That was just, you know, the day that she had passed, you know, four years ago. So I just wanted to, uh, 
put out there was on my mind, kind of. And uh, energy, you know, it doesn't die, it's only transferred. So once she passed on, her, her soul, her spirit is still alive and it lives through me. And the success that I have is what keeps her name alive and keeps, you know, her, her story told too. Some, and her story can motivate, you know, not just my story can motivate someone, but her story can motivate somebody too. So, yeah, she definitely lives through me and, you know, it's important for me to continue to be successful so her name can.